Okay, so my unit for day one notes I cut off for some reason. So I'm going to do these last examples and also clarify the homework. I'm going to take off some problems. So anyways, we're looking at these superscript. Superscript plus means from, from the positive side, from the right side. Okay, from the right side. Um, so like on this problem here, we're approaching three. From the left side, the value is approaching three. From the right side, as we approach x equals three, the y value is approaching negative two. So even though the function doesn't have that value there, it's approaching it. As we get super, super close, that's the value it looks like it's going to be. Now, since these don't agree, we say does not exist is one thing you could say, or you could say uh, non-existent, or you could say, you know, undefined, or you could say like no limit because the two sides have to agree. Like your parents, right? It's like your parents don't agree. So there is no limit. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, now the value of the function, this is the value of the function is where the dot is, that's one. Okay, this is the you know actual y value at x equals three. Not necessarily what's happening as it gets close to it. So this is a two-sided limit on part C, which generally limits are two-sided. Um, and they consist of the, the one-side limits, a green. Okay, so the next example, we're approaching x equals zero from the left side, and this approach is four. From the right side, it's approaching negative three. Uh, the limit, the two side limit, the overall limit does not exist. Um, and f of zero actually equals four. So, okay. Um, Next one, as we approach four from the left side, the graph blows up. Now, technically, we'd say does not exist because it blows up, okay? Technically, okay, but I want you, I want to know What's going on? Okay. Which means if it doesn't exist, is it because it doesn't exist because the two sides don't agree? Or does it not exist because it blows up to infinity? Does it go to positive infinity? Does it go to negative infinity? So I actually want you to write positive infinity for this guy. This is the same thing. I just rewrote it. This is the technical answer on the AP test. This is um, a little more informative, not technically correct, but at least indicates what's going. As we approach four from the right side, the graph goes to negative infinity. Technically does not exist. Okay. Now, as we approach four, we're going to say does not exist. Even if both sides go to infinity, we're going to say does not exist. Okay. So, the, the only time we can put infinity, positive or negative, is for a one side limit. Um, so, on the homework, which I would uh, make a lot shorter, let's say instead of 1 to 14 odd, we'll do 1 to 13 odd. Sound good? And uh, we'll get rid of problem 20. So, I think I cut, got rid of almost half the problems right there. Now, let me just give you a little tip for problem 19. Problem 19, 
uh, says to use a calculator or it has like a little C for a calculator. And this is a tabular approach, meaning we're gonna use a table. And so like on part A, they give you the limit as X goes to one of X minus one over X cubed minus one. And then I think they tell you like what values of X to plug in to 1.5, 1.1, 1.01, 1.001, and I don't know if they give you more. So essentially, they're telling you, let's get, let's approach one in a table. Now we've done tables before, so I would put the equation in my, t in uh, uh, as an equation, uh, x minus one, parentheses, divided by x to the third, minus one, close. Now I'm not going to graph this. I'm going to go to the table. Make sure your table setup is on ask for independent and auto for dependent. So we go to the table and there might be a bunch of values here already, right? So you could just delete them. We're going to just type these values in to 1.5, 1 1.1, 1 1.01, 1.001. .01. And so we're going to use this table to kind of see what's happening as we get close to one. And this is one from the right side specifically. So then after that, we're going to do, we're going to do it from the left side and we're going to see if they agree without seeing the picture, without really doing any algebra work. We're just letting the calculator do some work for us. So on your homework, you're going to, you know, write the table. And you're going to write down what you get. Okay, so that's the idea, okay, um, on problem 19, okay? So check your odds. Almost all these problems are odds. Check them in the back of your book. Maybe even as you go to make sure you're doing right before you get too far. You know, you might on the homework, you might draw pictures of the graphs. I've cut the problems way down to uh, make it a lot more reasonable. So take your time, do a good job, show your work. There's not much work to show. So maybe just draw a picture of the graph, write the problems down, write the answers. Uh, this is our first assignment out of the book. I want to see the problems written down. I want to see the answers. I want to see them boxed. I want to see a bunch of answers, not know what they go to. Okay. Um, if there's a picture, if there's work to show, show it, um, and then check your answers in the back of the book, mark them wrong if they're wrong, write down the right answer next to it. Don't just erase your answer. But if you, if you got it wrong, see if you can figure out how to get right. If not, just put a question mark next to it. And then you'll, you'll know what you have questions on, uh, to ask about in class or, you know, if I post a video showing the uh, answers, so go for it.